an element that makes up the mirrors of JWST could have left us with a very different universe to observe. I'm Sanjana Curtis and this is Stardust, a series where you and I will do a deep dive into the elements of the periodic table, their astrophysical origins, and their role on Earth. Today's element is beryllium, a bottleneck to the production of heavier elements of the periodic table, and in that sense, a bottleneck to the existence of life itself. With only four protons in its atomic nucleus, beryllium is a light metal, but unlike the other light elements, hydrogen, helium, and lithium, it is not thought to have been produced in any stable form in any significant amount during Big Bang nucleosynthesis. This is the main set of nuclear reactions that happen during Big Bang nucleosynthesis, involving various isotopes of hydrogen, helium, lithium, and an unstable isotope of beryllium, beryllium-7, which decays into lithium-7. Big Bang nucleosynthesis made negligible amounts of any elements heavier than lithium because of a bottleneck. There are no stable isotopes of any element with atomic mass 5 or 8. Why is that a problem? If a nucleus isn't very stable, if it decays very quickly, doesn't stick around for very long, the chances that it will participate in another nuclear reaction to make a heavier element are very, very low. And so beryllium becomes a bottleneck because when two helium nuclei fuse together, they make beryllium-8, which has a half-life of the order of 10 to the negative 17 seconds. To make carbon, a third helium nucleus has to fuse with the beryllium while it exists and produce carbon-12. That's how you get through the beryllium bottleneck, but the temperatures and densities and timescales needed to do this are found in stars, not so much in the very early universe. And even showing that carbon can be made in this way took a lot of very imaginative theoretical work, which I'll discuss in the episode on carbon. The one speculative thing I will say is that if beryllium-8 was stable, the universe may have looked very different than it does now. So how was the beryllium in the universe made? Beryllium only has one stable isotope, beryllium-9, and we think that the beryllium in the universe was made through cosmic ray spallation of elements like carbon and oxygen. Cosmic rays are high energy particles traveling through space, mainly particles like protons and alpha particles, and spallation results in expulsion of particles from the target, essentially breaking it into smaller pieces. This goes on not just in deep space, but on Earth as well. The Earth is continuously bombarded by cosmic rays, and this produces two unstable isotopes of beryllium, beryllium-7 and beryllium-10. Beryllium-10 is a long-lived isotope of beryllium, and it's useful in the field of geochronology. It accumulates on the Earth's surface and serves as a measure of exposure age of a rock, similar to how a suntan is a measure of how long you were lying around in the sun. Beryllium is found in over 100 minerals, all of them uncommon to rare. The main ones are beryl and bertrandite, and beryllium takes its name from the former. Because beryllium is both light and strong and capable of handling extreme cold, it was used to make the mirrors of JWST. JWST has 18 hexagonal beryllium mirrors, all of them plated with a thin layer of gold. These gold-plated beryllium mirrors are better than glass because they deform and contract less over a wide temperature range. And JWST is not the only telescope to use beryllium in its optics. The mirrors of the Spitzer Space Telescope, for example, are also made of beryllium. These are not the only uses of beryllium, of course. Structural components made of beryllium are very common in high-speed aircraft and satellites and even high-end bicycle frames.